Hi, everyone. Just um, waiting just a few minutes, letting everybody um, join. We'll start in a few minutes. Okay. okay. Um, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Um, I am Maria Fonseca. I'm a grants associate at the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation, and I would like to welcome you to this quality of light applicant tech, um, technical assistant webinar. Um, if you need to turn on the closed caption, there's an icon on the lower right. Um, I've answered um, via email most of the questions that were submitted um, during the registration, but if you have any questions, uh, please submit them in the Q&A instead of the chat. Um, the QOL team is here to answer them as we go along. And um, if we have some time at the end, we can maybe answer some additional questions live at the end of the webinar. Just keep an eye on the Q A um, of the Q and A, and some quest some questions might relate to what you need to know. And we're gonna gather these questions and answers and po post them on our website in a few days. Um, this presentation and the slides are going to be available on the our website in a few days. So right now I'm just gonna turn off my camera and I'm going to share these lights with you. Um, this is the introduction to our webinar. Um, the, uh, the topics that we are going to discuss are, we're gonna, I wanna tell you um, about the Reef Foundation National Paralysis Resource Center and all the programs and services that we offer. Uh, we'll go over the application process, um, the two tiers that we're offering at this cycle, which is direct effect grants applications and expanded impact. We'll go over the review process and the dates and how um, the grant selection is notified and um, also how the awards are issued. Um, this grant program is part of the Christopher and Dana Reef National Paralysis Resource Center and has been federally funded since 2014 through a cooperative agreement with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Community Living, ACL. The National PRC provides deeply needed information, programs, and support and assistance to over 5.3 Americans that live with paralysis. What's important to know is that we are paralysis focus and that the grant funding must be targeted to projects that serve individuals living with paralysis, their families and caregivers. We also use a functional definition of paralysis. The grants are not just um, towards um, spinal cord injury, but any difficulty or inability to use arms or legs, due to neurological conditions included, but not limited, like as I mentioned, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury, stroke, cerebral palsy, spina bifida. We will consider supporting programs that include people that have occurring disabilities, as well as inclusive projects, community projects, or projects that serve a majority of the people living with paralysis. You need, the project needs to serve at least three people with paralysis and or their families and caregivers. The National Paralysis Resource Center opened its doors to promote health, independence, and well being of individuals living with paralysis by providing comprehensive resources and education and referral services. These services, as listed here, we have information specialists, we have a peer and family support program, of course, the quality of life grants program, and a military and veterans program. Our mission. We are dedicated to curing spinal cord injury by advancing in innovative research and improving the quality of life for individuals and families impacted by paralysis for our mission of today's care. In addition to our QOL program, we offer an array of free services and resources to the paralysis community. We have a team of information specialists that is available to provide individual support. We have printed and digital resources, as we can see here, 
We have, as I mentioned before, peer and family support groups, and we have a yearly summit that will take place in March of 2024 in DC. And if anyone is interested in uh, registering, the summit, the registration for the summit is now open, and you can visit our summit, our summit page on our website for more information. Um, the refundation, we get a lot of um, requests uh, for um, individuals, but know that the awards are not cannot be granted to individuals, but a team of information specialists can help you identify resources and information. Their services are free. You can call at this number, or you can send, um, there's a very simple online form that you can fill out. And now we even have a chat feature available as well. So um, feel free to uh, contact it at any time. These, um, as, I, as I mentioned, our, our resources are free, including our paralysis resource guide is available in English and over 10 in Spanish and over 10 languages. We have wallet cards, we have state fact sheets, we have different information on secondary conditions. And all you need to do is you can go to the website and order them there or call one of an information specialist and get a copy. Um, these, are these are the important dates um, um, the cycle open on January 25th. All the proposals are due uh, midnight, March 8th. The external review process is from March 18th to April 6th. Then um, internally, the review from April 10th to the 8th. The grants are awarded and you'll receive a notification by the end of May and the grant period starts June 1st. This is, uh, before we move on, um, we just, um, to the application itself, just want to remind everyone about the new eligibility requirement um, that states that if you have been previously awarded, you have to wait a, a year after your grant has closed. Usually when the client closes, you received an email from us um, stating that the grant has been closed and it tells you when you can apply again. So just make sure that um, you have waited a year after that date. Um, so with this new agreement, we are striving to create a level playing field and opportunities for the organizations to apply for funding. So we have instituted a, a waiting period of five years, but that's only within the same category, the same category, the same project type, the same tier. Any other category or tier will still be a one year waiting period from your previous grant closure. For example, if there are five tiers of funding available twice a year, if your organization has received a tier one adaptive sport grants this cycle, you must wait one year after the grant is completed and you receive that notification and then you can apply for another quality of life grant, but your organization will be in it cannot apply for another tier one adaptive sports until that after June, 2026, but you can apply it for other categories in the same tier or other tiers for funding. If you have any questions about this, because you're a past grantee, you can email us at um, QOL um, at reeve.org and we can answer that for you. Before you start your application, um, please read the program guidelines. Um, there's videos and instructions to further assist you in completing your application. Please note that this is a very competitive process and we want just want to give you all the tools that you need to submit your application to best application that you can. So it's really important that the guidelines have a lot of information. They're available on the application. They're available on the website. So it's um, very important that you review them. For this cycle, um, we're going to be offering two tiers and that's going to be direct effect and um, expanded impact. Again, submissions uh, due date are the same, March 8th. And just remember that you can only submit one application per cycle. Um, also note from the questions submitted from the registration, if an organization has applied, has already applied in 2023, but were declined, were declined you definitely can uh, apply again. So again, as I mentioned, this in this cycle, we're going to offer direct effect. And um, they're up to this tier one, and it's up to 24,999 with a minimum of 5,000. So it has to be 5,000 and up, up to 24,999. And expanded impact, which is tier five, 
Um, this we're going to talk about expanded impacts in a few minutes, and um, but these are grants that are up to a hundred thousand and must be completed with twenty four months. You sh you have to have been a previously awarded quality of life gra um, grantee um, to be able to apply for these grants. If you are um, applying for expanded impact, please review the guidelines. It's very specific. They're available on our website. And these are for organizations that already have received a foundation um, grant that has shown great impact and is ready to move on to the next level of impact, either statewide, regionally, or nationally. The These, type, these grants are not for um, the same program, but more of the same. There has to be uh, a sizable and significant impact that you are um, trying to to achieve. It cannot, you know, for like over more, more of the same. If you if you conducted, let's say, an adaptive um, bicycle program, it cannot be. Well, we're going to get three, four more bikes. No, you have to expand the services that you're offering to other areas. And if you are applying for an expanded impact, we are required um, that all federal funded funded grants to that are awarded of twenty five thousand and above need to have a SAM um, a, a unique entity ID. There's instructions in the application of how to apply. Just give yourself definitely some time. Sometimes um, there's been a little bit of a processing time could be a little bit lengthy. So give yourself time to apply for this number if you don't have one, but you need to have this number in order to be awarded any grants above 25,000. The second side, the second tier for this cycle is the direct effect quality of life grants. They fund specific budget items up to a total of 24,999. And they support a wide range of projects and activities that are clearly impacting individuals living with paralysis and their families. If you are funded and you accept this grant, the terms require you to complete an interim report at six months and a final report at 12 months. And um, it's just, just reports to let us know, you know how um, the grant is coming along. Direct effect has a, a a lot of different um, project types. Um, for example, like, a, you know, wheelchairs for a basketball team or um, kayak for a rowing program, sometimes like a lift for a pool, Access accessibility like for uh, electronic door openers at a community center, um, picnic tables at a fairground. There's a lot of different projects that this tier can fund. There are examples of things that we have funded in the past, and you can see that on our website. But again, if you have any questions, qol at weave.org. So now you're ready to, um, to start your application and, and all our applications, everything is on the portal. Um, this is the link to access the portal. Um, you can find the link on our website and then the grant application and the program guidelines. Once, um, On the right of the screen are detailed instructions on how to apply and set up your organization. You need to create an account. You're a first time applicant. Returning applicants use the emails, email address that you used before. If you need assistance um, logging, please send an email to uh, qol at read.org and make sure that you send your EIN number to, so we can find, make sure that we have the right organization and we will assist you getting your login credentials. Also at this time, if any of the contact information or addresses have changed, it's a good time to update it. Please provide always at least two contact names. It makes it um, very helpful for us. And please make sure that the organization name is correct in the portal or the dashboard. The name must match the official name that if, let's say, because you, if you were awarded, that that's the check that the name will be under. Sometimes we see you know differences and that, that could cross a little bit of um, issues later on. So just make sure that 
that the name on the portal is the name of your organization. So in this cycle, we are offering the 2024 direct effects and 24 um, expanded, as I mentioned. And here in this page, you can um, select which one and um, you can preview by clicking on, on the little eye there. You can preview the whole application, all of the questions. You can also work on offline and, um, and work um, on the questions that have all your answers and then bring them over to the application. This little thing here was sent to Grand Hump is a, um, a tool. If you are applying to different grants with different organization, it kind of is it's a service that Foundin has to kind of keep um, all your applications kind of in the same place. The application deadline is again, March 8th, <laughs> no exceptions. And just make sure that, um, that you complete it on time here. It, again, I wanna you know, show you how you can see the guidelines for discussing people with disabilities and you can access the program guidelines. So, um, we are gonna start about who um, is eligible to apply. So you will see here, these and these questions are going to be on the application. I just want to, just to go, we're gonna go over it quickly. Um, a lot of them are just, you know, self-explanatory. You, you, you check in yes or no, but just know that um, you can apply if you're a nonprofit organization with an IRS 501c3, if you're a municipal or state government, school district, colleges, and universities, recognized tribal entities, and other institutions, institutions such as community health centers or veteran hospitals. Who is not able to apply if you are for-profit, if you're a fiscal sponsor, um, if you, this is really important, we see this a lot, just make sure if you have a current or open grant with the Reef Foundation, irrespective of the grant or program or the tier that and you have not waited the 12 month require after it's closing, you cannot apply. Um, if you have a question about it and you're not sure, let, you know you can send us an email and we'll check, but we, we cannot, uh, previously awarded grantees have to apply one year after the closing. Another uh, that I wanna bring up that we had a couple of questions submitted when we were registered, when you were registering for the, web for the webinar is that any, nonprofit organization that is outside of the United States or is a vendor, uses vendors outside of the United States, we cannot um, fund those projects. All these questions are going to be um, listed in the application. Just, I just wanted to show you guys a, a screenshot to see, but it's basically asking um, those questions that we just went over. There's funding restrictions of things that we cannot fund. Um, money given to individuals, uh, for example, directly to pay for respite care or travel, meals. Um, we cannot fund research and we cannot fund um, therapy. However, programs that assist people living with paralysis to participate like in an exercise opportunities are allowable. And programs that use physical or occupational therapists to work directly with persons those are considered um, part of a real, uh, rehabilitation therapy. But if it's a, an exercise program, those are allowed. Um, also, I want to bring to your attention, if you have a program that it's a camp or um, sometimes sponsors an outing, just make sure that when you're listing your expenses, um, that there are no waters or meals that is included in the admission or t-shirts or any kind of anything that can be considered a personal gift. When you are listing that, please make sure that we cannot fund um, those expenses. And this is how it looks in the application. And basically it's it's just um, detailing what we just you know, went over. For equipment, equipment can be funded if it provides access or it promotes independent. For So a couple of examples, um, it would be like a transfer share at a community pool, a stair lift, 
Um, sometimes we have funded um, examination tables at doctor's um, offices or, or community health centers. So um, they can have access to um, do in, at doctor's visits. Um, we can also, things that promote independence, for example, a scale, um, it allows people to remain healthy, um, beach wheelchairs and adaptive bikes at a community park. All of these are examples of equipment that we fund. Gym equipment that it that provides access is allowable. However, no gym equipment that you have to have a physical therapist or a medical type of personnel guiding you in the process of using your uh, um, or using the therapy. The other, um, however, um, you cannot give a specific, like for example, sometimes we have requests of somebody who wants to put a ramp in somebody's house. We're not able to do that. Or um, just give a wheelchair uh, to a person in, an, as an individual. However, it is allowable to fund loan closets. Otherwise, equipment provided to individuals to keep is considered a gift. It is important that you detail in your application how the loan, the loan closet will be managed. Requests for loan clauses money must include a specified must include a specified period of time, and a devised loan is typically about four to six weeks, and sometimes up to nine weeks, and enables individuals to try out and you know get familiar with with the with the um, with the equipment before um, buying it. Internet services can be provided through the loan of hotspot devices or a tablet that has internet service included. We cannot fund development of prototypes or inventions of equipment or research. Um, sometimes we we see requests for somebody who's trying to develop uh, something that is going to be helpful for um, somebody living with paralysis. But if it's in the development stage, it's something that we cannot find. We cannot fund. We cannot fund construction of buildings, any major constructions. When it comes to playgrounds, um, we cannot fund the installation of a new playground. We um, we can um, fund a uh, modifications or minor relocations of non-accessible playgrounds or so parks is allowable. We cannot fund any playgrounds that would be entirely new. Uh, we see many applications um, from like school districts or towns that currently have no inclusive or accessible options for children living with paralysis in the families. If a, if a school comes to us with a proposal that says, they're completely renovating their non-accessible playground to make it fully accessible and inclusive because they're replacing the older playground. We can fund things as a poor in play surfacing or um, accessible and inclusive playground structures. If this school did not have a playground before and it's, insta and it's installing a brand new program for the first time on the property, we're not able to fund that. If minor relocations are happening within the same property, such as moving the playground to a more accessible location on school grounds, that would be consider considered eligible as well. But relocations must remain at the same property once it becomes a change of address and is no longer a minor um, relocation. So the Application is going to ask you to make sure that you understood and you listed um, all these um, eligibilities and requirements. It's then you have to select the project type that um, that you are going to be that you're asking for funding, and these are all the different categories that are listed in the application. Then, the, then we move over to project description, and this is this is very important. We want you to, as it says in the example here, just to provide a simple and short summary of the project, which outlines the why, what what the need is, what activities, what are you offering, and how the re funding support of your project is going to help you. We suggest that you keep it as simple as other specific project components like the timeline and the goals and the impact are covered in the different sections. So an example here is 
We are currently have 20 people with paralysis as register users or our fitness equipments at no cost. And one of the most popular equipment, Equipment X, is old and failing. And we're the only organization that can provide um, with the next, and then within the 20 mile radius to offer this opportunity. So this equipment is gonna allow us to safely provide services to individuals with paralysis. So this is what we wanna see here, the need, the what, and the why. The project goals um, is what is it that you want to achieve at, as a result of this project and what you be, are going to be doing to, achievement, to achieve it. For example, um, increase the number of people that are going to attend the fitness classes. We want to, though it, also what is really important is just keep in mind if you are, if you are applying for direct effect, it's a 12 months program project and if for your uh, expanded impact is 24 months we want to we want to also know what the expected impact is uh, what impact would the project have on the target population the family their caregivers for example if you offer a free beach access program that will have a long lasting impact on people with paralysis and their and their caregivers and that this program is going to help with inclusion and connection in a fun safe environment the, and that's what we want to see. We want to see what is going to be the significant and direct impact of this project. Something that is very important that we want to we uh, have seen recently is um, an influx of of once the project is funded is we see a lot of requests of extensions based on the timing of the expenditures. So we want to just to make sure um, that. Um, when you are when you're putting your application together and you're thinking of your project, of, of course, like think about it, you know, it's going to be 12 months. Just make sure that you have in place, number one, that you're going to be able to to get the, the equipment in a timely manner, that you're going to be able to store it, that you are that you have coordinated, especially when you're a college or a university that um, that is in alignment with, with the school year, with the semester timeline, that you can use the funds within those 12 months that you have coordinated with other departments that are going to be part of making this project successful. Sometimes um, that if you need like, if you need permits or if you need um, just to make sure that everyone is fully aware of all the process and all the steps that it takes to to you know to make the project successful because no we going forward no extension for failure to follow these guidelines will be granted it's really important that you have really thought out the project for the next um and you're going to be able to complete it in the next 12 months then the application is going to ask um the impact that it has on the number of living with paralysis. And when you are answering this question, just make sure and just remember that this applies to the number of people that are being served with for this specific project as it relates to the project only. For example, sometimes, you know, if, you, if you're if you a YMCA and you're getting a new piece of equipment, just remember we are asking directly to the project on this piece of equipment. We don't, we don't wanna see you know, the total number of people that come to the YMCA, but just the, just specifically as it relates to the project that we are um, funding. We ask you to complete the demographics and if you need a um, little bit of assistance finding certain numbers and, and, and data, uh, these are websites that um, lets you view and download disability data for every country, for every county in the United States. As for evaluation, when you propose it, we want to we want to we want to measure it. So you need to just let us here just let us know um, identify the approach that you're going to take to achieve the expected goals and outcomes. Uh, for example, if you if your goal is to serve 20 people with paralysis and at least 90 percent um, of the participants um, will report improve reported an improved quality of life in your evaluation method methods could be um, a survey or track people and solicit their their feedback. 
and this is what we uh, you would include in your final report, like the fitness class, the fitness class offered 20 people, was offered to 20 people. Of those 20, 16 completed our survey, and here is um, the responses that they provided. For the medically underserved areas and uh, MUAs and MUPs, we ask you that you fill this out. And if you can provide the counties that you're serving, that really helps us is this is information that we are required to um, provide to ACL. So um, we wanted just to complete it as, as accurate as possible. Next, we move to the budget amount requested. Remember again, for direct effect, it's a minimum of a 5,000, a maximum of 24,999. Um, you will fill out the amount requested. There, you see later on in the budget file, we 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 list what the total cut it, cost is, which, um, and then what you are requesting from the Reef Foundation. And all of this is detailed in the proposed project budget is an Excel sheet that is in the application. There's also a video that you can watch in our Reef channel if you want to see um, a more detailed explanation of um, of how to fill this out. But it's, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory um, template in Excel for, for you to let us know uh, the funds that you're requesting or what the total uh, cost of the project is going to be. Is um, we have revised the project budget template. Just make sure that you use the one in the application. It's a new template and it's down. You can download it straight from the application. So use, please use that document. And I mentioned you just go back and, and you can use the, the video tutorial if you need a little bit more, exp, more um, explanation. These are the uh, allowable expenses. And um, these are the things that we can fund. If this is your first time applying for a QOL grant, uh, you'll see how many different project categories we're able to fund this, each year. Um, these are the, so we can, you know, programs and services, personnel, consultants, um, entry fees, transportation. Um, when it comes to travel, these is these are the limits that are allowable. And um, please, you know, maintain the, the range that is listed there. And if you, for example, are saying um, in your budget that um, four people will travel, just kind of break it down what that amount in terms of airfare and lodging, you we you be specific about the amounts that you're asking to, to be funded. We do allow a indirect cost of uh, no more than 10% is allowable. However, if your organization, um, has a negotiated uh, federal indirect cost rate agreement, just, just send us a copy of that agreement if it's um, if you are listing more than 10% of your indirect cost. Pro programmatic expenses directly related to serving individuals with paralysis and their families are considered more favorable than operational expenses on and or, and or large capital projects. So going back to the budget, um, this is the budget template that is there. Um, please make sure that you fill out the name of the organization, the name of the project exactly as it's listed on the application, the amount that you're requesting from us and what the total project budget is going to be. Um, use that template, um, do not, the, as all the formulas are all there. So just follow along with um, all the different categories and then what comes, you know, make sure that you don't include taxes, that make sure that you do not include um, any individual gifts in this budget. The second part of the budget is it's going to, um, it, if we just partially, partially funding the project, we want to know the current position of the balance of the fund. So here we always we want to see um, it's helpful for us to see how much of our funds are contributing to the total project. And if we see a large gap, we will contact you and ask you for the status of this fund. So please be here, be as specific as possible. Like if you're saying that, because it can, you know, um, cost delayed in processing. So if you, 
if you have a large gap, let's say, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars. I mean, but just and they're coming from internal funds. Just let us know the the status of it, or is it, or where are you? Because it's really important for us to know that this funding gap is going to be um, that it can be met. So the bud so the budget has two components: the the template, the Excel template that we just talked about, and then the narrative. And the narrative is basically the Excel sheet in writing. When you go there, I know some. I had a question today. Somebody gets a little confused to say, "Oh, there was just the instructions are there." No, it just tells you the, the it's it's a it's a, a word document and it tells you exactly what we're looking for each, for in each section. So you'll see an explanation, and below that, basically what you're going is line by line in your budget template, and you including a description and a justification of each budget category line by line, the same way that it was presented in your budget. So if we are looking at the temp, uh, the Excel spreadsheet, it, we can see that the same thing is being explained in the budget narrative. Do not list anything on this narrative that you're not requesting funding for. So the budget narrative should really help us a better understanding of what the funds are being used for. There's also a copy of this narrative template down that can be downloaded straight from the application. And please use this file instead um, of a cop, you know, of a form of your own. When it comes to vendor quotes, um, we are now requiring for all equipment purchases and, and contractor to that you provide us with a vendor quote. The vendor quote must be for at least for three months within um, submitting this application. Um, vendor quotes and other information support the budget items. And we ask you that you upload it. There's a right here where it says upload a file. You can just put um, the quotes there. I know there's a section that says that you must have three different sets. That's for your records, but we're asking for you to, for example, if you're requesting for us to fund an accessible bike, that you have a current vendor quote of the bike that you're going to purchase. And that also helps us know that, you know, it shows us that, that the supply lines and everything has, has been put in, you know, it, it's, you're, you're able to order this bike when, when the time, if you're funded and you want to move your project forward. We also want to know if you are not funded for this project or you know how how what what happens if the refoundation is not able to support the proposed po uh, project what your um contingency funding would be if you have any additional materials or any um sometimes photographs or new papers or clippings you can you know welcome to see that in the mission statement, what we are looking for is, is for us to tell us who you are, what you do and how you do it, the reason that your organization is in place. These are straightforward federal audit questions if, um, that you can answer here in terms of um, federal, when it comes to federal funding. We want to know if you are a prior grantee if you have been awarded in the past, um, we want to see your final report. And we also want to know how you learned about this grant opportunity. So here you can see there's a button you can just make, just be sure you can save the application and come back and, and, and work at a, at a later time. If not, you can always submit your application and you'll receive an email just confirming that your application was submitted and received and you, you, you don't gotta complete that. You gotta get that from the system. Um, all um, awards and all the applicants will be notified by email. Um, you will receive a notice of the awards and the grant in, if you are awarded, you'll receive a, an intent to accept the grant you have to um, complete that. And once we receive it, we uh, provide you with a grant award agreement that you need to sign and return. And once we receive the grant agreement, the checks are issued. We will, when it comes to publicizing the grant, we will send you some tools and some press material and um, 
media releases of how to publicize the grant. Um, and sometimes, many times, we feature our quality of life grantees on social media or on the website and newsletter. So we can call up on YouTube, you know, if you want to share any stories or sometimes we have past grantees can share um, photographs or videos and we we um, really welcome to share those we with the community in addition as i mentioned at the beginning we have all these free resources that are provided by the national paralysis resource center so we um we encourage you to use them as once if you accept a grant Part of um, accepting the grant is that you have to submit progress reports to the Reef Foundation uh, for this particular tier, direct effect for the 12 months. Um, there's an interim at six months and a final at 13 months. And expanded impact has four reports at six months, 12. There's a check-in at 18 months and a final at 25, uh, 25 months. We cannot, um, we have a requirement. We were unable to, to comment on denied applications or just provide any kind of direction. We can't tell you about specifics of, of, of any kind of feedback or direction or suggestions. We want to have a, um, be fair to all other applicants. So if you have any questions within the process itself, um, you can email us, but in terms of specifics and telling you you should have written this year that that we cannot do. All right, so thank you so much for the interest in the in our grant program. We look forward to receiving your submissions. Again, if you have any questions, just send them to ql at reeb.org. I don't know if there's any questions that haven't been answered. Uh, I see two more, which I'm answering now. Okay, so I hope that you got um, some good information here to submit the to submit your application and um, just in, give us maybe by by next week um, we would have we're gonna have this webinar available on our website as long with the questions. Uh, I'm handling some questions, so let's not um, get off. Okay, so I know that there's some questions being asked. Let's see. Um, I have on, one. On. Okay, there's one from Rosa. Is there any general feedback I want about why some proposals were not considered, or that not meeting the basic requirements? Unfortunately, we can't. Um, what is really important that we always recommend is that you go. Um, to read our guidelines because they're very they they have great information they're very specific and I think that usually um, would give you um, directions on how to fill the applications. Um, we receive you know it's a very competitive process so that's why we want to do this webinar and give you as much as, as much information as to um, fill the application um, the best way but. Um, just to clarify, the intent is um, the entire the process is coming from ACO, this yes. aspect of the right. guidance. It is not the QOL team, but ACL. Right. These are, yeah, we, yes. we follow ACL, a, ACL Guide. guidelines when it comes to, um, you know, the funding and what uh, the information that we can share after a grant has been denied or um, this is pretty much what we can do. So there's a question. We're going to stay on for a little bit longer. I know that Perul is still answering some questions. So, uh, question from Claire If okay. the funding went to reimburse a partner agency to bring participants to us, that would be allowable. Yes, but it cannot be 100% of the funding going to them. Portion of the funding, some fraction of the total um, funds, but not the entire thing. Um, anonymous attendee, QOL at yeah. I'm just answering yeah, that. That is correct. Okay. 
So there's a question from Brittany. Could we use the funding for art therapy to help patients with paralysis, TBI, spinal yes. cord? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Um, can tier two grant be a con continuum of tier one? Um, at this time, we are not uh, offering tier two. That would be priority impact and that has completely different focus areas from what is offered in tier one. So by definition, this cannot be a continuation of tier one. Art. So Brittany's question would the art therapy program would be considered under tier five? Absolutely, as long as this is an expansion to a previously approved art therapy program under direct effect or priority impact or any other tier. So if it's an expansion of a previously funded project by Reeve. No, she said perfect it is. Right. Yes, I saw someone ask earlier about, earlier about massage therapy for people with SEI and the report and the response was it qualified? Is this correct? Massage therapy qualifies. As long as the benefits associated are I are listed in the application. The uh, my organ organization is um, okay. Good. So no, no, it's fine. Quasi government with a tax exempt number. We have a foundation. So for these one off type of situations, um, we'd like additional details. If you can write to QOL at read.org and provide details, we can uh, respond to you better. Claire. We are a therapeutic horse riding facility and need to purchase mechanical horses, uh, which would allow greater safety. The total cost is about 30. Would this be an eligible request? We cannot fund the maximum uh, 30. We can do up to 24,999. Okay, I think we answered them all. All right, great. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Alida. Mm -hmm.